Experts are saying that space data centers, data centers literally sitting in space, powered by solar panels in space, are the solution to this big problem that we're facing. The pro big problem is these AI data centers are using insane amounts of power, and it's only going to get worse. I mean, they're going to need a lot more power in 10 years than what they need today. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. YouTube's new algorithm means that you're often not getting all of our videos in your feed. There's 7,500. I'm pretty sure you're probably not seeing a lot of them. In the description, there is a link to our newsletter. Click on that and you can get an update every day of all the latest news in the electric car industry. Facebook or Meta, they are getting gas peaker plants, basically gas power stations to power many of their data centers. And that's just... Well, it's not good, obviously. The methane from gas emissions is not good. There's many things about gas that sucks. And unfortunately, this problem is going to get worse before it gets better. However, experts are saying that there is a solution. Space data centers could solve the problem of a 165% surge in AI power use. So what are these data centers about? I mean, we've heard about this stuff before, but honestly, it sounds like this could be a real solution. A team of researchers from NTU, Singapore, have joined the call to place data centers in space. Now there's numerous experts saying data centers in space would work, not just one group of people. This would pave the way for sustainable computing, say experts. According to the team in Singapore, space data centers would be powered by round the clock solar energy and would harness free cooling. So yeah, I mean, obviously it's very cold in space. Crucially, all of this is possible using existing technologies. The NTU Singapore team proposed sending data centers to low Earth orbit. That's basically where Starlink satellites are, and it's called LEO. This concept would be particularly useful for island cities like Singapore, where limited land leads to high real estate costs, making data centers even more expensive. And in fact, Singapore has to import a lot of its power right now. Low Earth orbit is the area of space below an altitude of 2,000 kilometers, which is 1,200 miles. So normally low Earth orbit is approximately 1,000 to 2,000 kilometers above the planet. The Singapore team proposed sending data centers to low Earth orbit, and this concept would be, apparently they say, viable based on the technology we have right now. In a paper published in the peer-reviewed journal Nature Electronics, the team described how satellites equipped with advanced processors could serve as orbital edge and cloud data centers. Though launching data centers to space is theoretically expensive, the LEO or LEO environment provides some massive benefits. Firstly, data centers in space would harness the effects of natural radiative cooling due to the extremely cold temperatures. That saves a lot of energy. On Earth, expensive cooling systems that consume enormous amounts of water are required to run data centers effectively. Secondly, operating space in space would offer virtually unlimited solar energy. You wouldn't even need batteries to store that power. The team claims these conditions allow an orbital data center to operate with net zero carbon emissions at a lower price. Space offers a true sustainable environment for computing, said the study's lead professor, Wen Yong Yang, in a press statement. We must dream boldly and think unconventionally if we want to build a better future for humanity. By harnessing the sun's energy and the cold vacuum of space, orbital data centers could transform global computing, he said. Our goal is to turn space into a renewable resource for humanity. Expanding AI capacity without increasing carbon emissions or straining Earth's limited land and energy resources. Now, whilst it's true we have plenty of land available for renewable energy globally, we do, we've got vast deserts and massive amounts of land that we can't really use for farming, land that's not really arable. Well, here's the thing. Most of that land, not all of it, most of that land though, is not located near cities where we need the data centers or at least near population centers. The NTU Singapore team proposed two different methods for deploying data centers in space. The first utilizes orbital edge data centers. 
These will harness imaging or sensing satellites equipped with AI accelerators to process raw data in orbit. By only transmitting the essential processed information to Earth, they would reduce data transmission volumes a hundredfold, significantly lowering energy requirements. My solar and batteries, I've got a 50 kilowatt hour battery here, and I've got a big solar array. So I pay zero dollars for electricity. That's including charging my electric car. Resync Solar is the company that I used. I'll put a link to them in the description below. The second method, orbital cloud data centers would see satellite constellations filled with servers, broadband links, solar panels, and radiated coolers. These would collectively perform advanced computing tasks from space. And I'm guessing that a company like SpaceX, who have lots of experience in deploying lots of thousands of satellites, could probably you know, send these up at a, a lower cost than what we would have been looking at 20 years ago. The scientists claim these methods are entirely feasible using launch and satellite tech available today. This self course is critical, right? I mean, these ideas um, are not gonna work unless we have the tech. Now, as AI-driven computing demand is increasing at a rapid and some say unsustainable pace, according to a, a Goldman Sachs report from earlier this year, AI-driven energy demand is gonna rise by 165% by 2030 alone. By 2040, that number will be much, much higher. Earlier this year, Former Google head Eric Schmidt told Congress that energy demand will go from 3% to 99% of total generation due to largely, well, basically from rising AI demand. Schmidt, who is now CEO of Relativity Space, also said he acquired the launch startup to build data centers in space. So this really could happen. Now, I personally used to be fairly skeptical about the idea of having solar farms in space. But when you look at the actual the logic behind it, it actually does make sense, particularly with data centers, particularly with being able to cool them without the need for massive expenditure and massive water use. So I'm kind of picturing this as a real thing. I'm picturing that, you know, 20, 30 years from now, we'll have data centers flooding up in space. And we might even have solar space farms as well that we use for power back down on Earth. What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.